that TV terror who's on everyone's hit list, Ross Lee. And here he is again with yet another one of his 101 ways to get on the box. Some weeks I have to search very hard for the perfect TV show to infiltrate. And some weeks opportunities are heaven sent. In the run-up to the European elections, the BBC are holding a series of phone-in programmes presented by the king of political chat himself, Jeremy Paxman. In Jeremy's hot seat today is none other than the Prime Minister, John Major. All the political boffins around the country are sat by their television screens in anticipation of hearing the Premier's views on Europe. Europe, in one way or another, impacts upon our lives in the United Kingdom. Now, I am taking this very seriously. I'm so excited about the possibility of speaking to John Major. I'm willing to take my hat off to him. And everything else, for that matter. Oh, and this, this is just to help me find a really exciting question to ask. Now, to get onto this programme, all you've got to do is ring up the researchers. And if they think that your question is thrilling enough for Jeremy and John to chat about, then they'll let you loose on air. Like, for instance, Terry Coe's question. <laughs> Terry <laughs> Coe is on the line now from Chester. Mr Coe. Yes, why is the Prime Minister making an issue of the veto when he was part of the government that um, went to qualified majority voting? Well, that was an interesting point, wasn't it? What is qualified majority watching? I want to ask a question which people really want to know the answer to. OK, here you go. Yes, hello there. You couldn't possibly tell me whether John Major dyed his hair, could you? Right, OK. Didn't like that one. So we'll just have to try again. Here goes. Yes, hi. Uh, could John tell me where the best pub in Brixton is, please? Yeah. The cut-off? The pull-up? Oh, no. What am I going to say? What is it that TV producers will believe to be exciting TV? Paul Wright's on the line now from Camden in London. That's me! Good morning, Mr. Paxman. Good morning, Mr. Major. Good morning. Um, when discussing Europe, politicians seem to get extremely heated about our perceived loss of British identity. However, I feel that people under 30 actually consider themselves more European than British, and that British identity is fast becoming a thing of the past. Um, what do you think, Mr. Major? Well, that was a bit of a mouthful, wasn't it? That, um, the further up the age scale you go, the greater the concerns about loss of identity are. Yeah. I think that is undoubtedly. With Europe, there, they've grown up with it more. They're more inclined to travel with it, uh, to, to, to travel in. Isn't just a British phenomenon. It is tangible in some parts of uh, Germany. You can certainly feel it in Denmark. It was very evident in their referendum. And it's quite it isn't going on and on and on. Just stop in. But what I would like to add to that, if I may is we ought not to let those disaffections because of the fallibilities of politicians and bureaucrats blind to the fact that the development of the European Union okay. is one of the most important changes we've seen in this country for a very long time and it is a beneficial change. Get real, John. The most beneficial change in Britain was when EastEnders went three times a week. But John, now you really are a man of the people because just like Richard Madeley, you've been rough. Le Euro election. Don't you just love it? Mwah. Ross Lee. The Prime Minister He's of this really country. He's really gone to the top this time, hasn't he? On the phone. Unbelievable. Unbelievable.